different people or different organization they define precision agriculture in a different way precision agriculture is also known as a precision farming and probably the best easiest way to understand what is precision agriculture is think about everything everything means think about machine think about technology think about knowledge think about skill and all kinds of tool that we use in farming and that makes our farming practice more accurate and more controlled once our farming practice is more accurate and more controlled that is called precision agriculture or this is the part of precision agriculture and it could be related to the crops or it could be related to the livestock i mentioned you different tools machines tractors and different sensors and the goal of this using all these sensors to machine is to collect the data and after collecting data we analyze the data that means by analyzing data gathered from sensors tractors and satellites today's farmers are able to track crop health make planting decisions and guide fertilizer use why we use this to make our farming system more effective and more profitable that means using all all kinds of data collected from different equipments we use this data to make the decision plant management decision or animal management decision and why we make the decision to make sure that our resources are used more effectively and our business is profitable business means livestock farming or crop farming a key component of this farm management approach is the use of information technology and a wide area of items information technology and wide area of items items means again different kinds of sensors tools equipment satellites and so on so when we think about precision agriculture what comes to our mind what do you what do we think about precision agriculture when we say precision agriculture or when we hear the term precision agriculture different kind of things come to our mind for example let's see here gps guided system sprayers section control row crop management yield monitoring in the field remote sensing in field sensing data management variable rate, rate application that could be fertilizer application that could be irrigation application i mean water application telematics and robotics this everything are related to the precision agriculture and everything that makes our farming system more accurate and more controlled why we use all this technology and system is to make our farming system more accurate and more controlled so i want you to remember these two words accurate and controlled we want to maintain the accuracy and we want to control our farming system based on the data collected from the different tools and that gives the sense of precision agriculture or precision farming precision agriculture precision agriculture species has three steps the first one is the sensing that means collecting data how we are collecting data it could be soil sensing it could be remote sensing or ground truthing doesn't matter what we are doing the idea is we are sensing and we are collecting data that is the first step in precision agriculture and the second step is data interpretation from the first step from the sensing we got data we have a lot of data then our work is now to interpret this data data itself is nothing until and unless we use it so that the next step is calibration and processing data interpretation and decision support tool that means we use this data as a decision support tool or this data support us to make the decision and the last step is the decision making that means site specific application that could be variable rate of application that could be best management practices and that could be precise harvesting again the three steps are first step is the collecting data that means the sensing second is the interpretation of this data and the third one is the application of this data application of the result and this gives the sense of precision farming and finally here 
we can have a yield map based on the yield in the field this map looks like this so what is remote sensing then because i in the previous slide i told you about remote sensing is one of the tools of precision agriculture precision agriculture is really broad but remote sensing is a part of precision agriculture and this is the fundamental part very important part these days remote sensing is one of the most important part of precision agriculture because we use remote sensing to collect data data tells us what we need to do and what we do not need to do remote sensing is a method for gathering information of different objects on the planet without any physical contacts with them without any physical contact we collect data about our planet and it could be trees water grass bare soil road buildings whatever that means they are getting energy from the sun and they are reflecting that energy to the atmosphere and our remote sensing tools for example satellite they will capture this information they will capture this reflected lights from these objects and based on these reflection based on these captured information they will tell us what is going on or they will give us some data and based on this data we will decide what to do or what not to do so in short remote sensing is any kind of data collection process without touching them without physical contact with them that means if we collect the information from the distance that is remote sensing and sometimes people ask me like uh, how long distance should be there to call something as a remote sensing the answer is the term remote sensing is very dynamic there is not defined distance to be a remote sensing it could be few centimeters it could be thousand of miles the idea is we collect we are collecting information about the objects without touching them without physical contact with them that is remote sensing and there are some particular elements involved in remote sensing the first one is energy source you can see here a a is energy source sun and the second one is the radiation and the atmosphere atmosphere is here so this is the solar energy energy is going to the earth then there is a space atmosphere this is the second component and the third component is the interaction with the target the energy is derived from here and it will hit the target the target could be our soil surface plant surface buildings whatever then the fourth one is the recording of energy from the sensor the object is now reflecting the energy and here is now the satellite and this is the recording of the energy by the sensor this has the sensor and it is recording the energy that is transmitted or reflected by the object and the next step is the transmission reception and processing so this object or this drone this will transmit the information to here and it could be directly to the station or it could be indirectly that means this satellite sends the information to another satellite and the another satellite sends back the information to the earth or it could be direct whatever that means anyway we are talking about transmission reception and processing that means the information will be coming here then we'll process the data that means the information will come here then we'll process the data and the next step is interpretation and analysis from here we already got the data or directly or indirectly we got data here then our next step is processing of this data what the data is going to tell us we have to find it then the final step is the application of this information once we get the data once we analyze it the data is going to tell us something about our crop about our animals about our vegetation or about our earth whatever the data will tell us something and based on this data we make the decision that is the final step that is the application step so the process starts from the energy source atmosphere then the object here then the object will reflect the energy back to the sensor then the sensor will will send the information to the station then 
we will start interpretation of this data and finally making the decision that is all the process of remote sensing i told you before that remote sensing could be anything from anywhere there is no distance limit you can see here airborne remote sensing tools like satellites it could be it could be thousand of miles then airborne photography it could be several kilometers or several miles then aerial television uav drones could be 150 meters very close and there are some other ground based remote sensing tools the idea is we use different kind of tools and we get the information about our land about our residence about our city about our water supply system about our vegetation the idea is getting information about our planet what is happening there are basically three different remote sensing platforms the number one is the satellite it could be thousands of miles from the earth then the second one is the aircraft the using of satellite is uh, generally it is very far away from the earth so its peak resolution will be very small the picture res resolution will be very small using this one but the good thing is different companies different organizations they have the satellites we can just ask them can you provide me this kind of data they just provide the data we don't need to do too many things we don't need to have a personal satellite or the our satellite that's the benefit but the uh, disadvantage is uh, the picture resolution will be very low very small pictures then the aircraft this is the another platform for remote sensing but it could be expensive because you need the plane you need the pilot to collect the data and the most popular is the drone very close to the ground surface and it's cheaper there are many drones you can buy for less than thousand dollars or there are some drones cost several thousand dollars even depends but the thing is that they are easy to operate and easy to get the data easy to get the information and easy to handle the whole process why we use remote sensing then remote sensing gives us the information on land cover land use habitats landscape and infrastructure multiple engagements by time series you can see this land at different period of time different time of the year probably things are changing the same location but different time of the year the picture is different how the land is engaged by time series we can study about that and managing and monitoring changes and predict future see this one 1973 the forest land was like this 1976 73 76 the forest land is degrading 1986 it's more degrading that means the green portion is reducing every after a few years and based on this information we can predict the future and of course it is fast and easy fast in the sense that if you fly the drone if you fly the airplane you can get thousands of pictures within few minutes the processing takes time but data collecting is not that difficult use of remote sensing data remote sensing data can be used for different purpose the first one is urban planning where we want to extend this city or where we do not want to extend these areas then roads and networks because it is easy to see from the distance and based on that where do we want to construct our new roads and new infrastructure we can decide about that city expansion i told about that city boundaries and time and land use change over the short term or over the long term some land use change happens in a long time for example if we are converting forest area to the crop area it takes time if we are converting our crop area to the residential area it takes time but if we are converting our crop land to the fallow land or just after harvesting there won't be any crops then this is also the land change in land use and it doesn't take most time just a season and also we use the remote sensing data for natural resource management for him it is used in forestry it is used in water resource management habitat analysis environmental assessment pest and disease outbreak and geomorphology 
related to the soil and soil health. How do we use remote sensing data in agriculture then? There are several ways we use the remote sensing data in agriculture. For example, soil sensing, farm classification, mapping of farm and agriculture land characteristics, monitoring land management practices, site specific management, crop and livestock health and yield estimation, yield monitoring and yield estimation. This is the picture we generated using a aerial vehicle or the some satellite and this information is very important for us to understand about the vegetation to understand about the crop health and to plan for the future according to the present condition present situation one of the very important use of remote sensing data is variable rate fertilization that means based on the data we collected we can use the different rate of fertilizer within the same field okay, you can see here phosphorus potassium and soil ph based on these pictures you can see how much phosphorus we have in the soil red means about 10 lb per acre this area has 10 lb per acre phosphorus this is the low amount probably and if we need to add the fertilizer in this whole plot probably we would add more here because here the fertilizer is less so this area needs more fertilization but see here this side it has 119 lb per acre so probably we do not need to add any fertilizer in this area same happens in the in case of potassium potassium this land has only 150 pounds per acre in this area this area may need more potassium fertilizer green area it has more than 200 pounds per acre so probably this area needs less fertilizer or even may not need the fertilizer so based on these pictures we can decide for the variable rate of fertilization fertilizer application this is again the similar map we generated the map here and based on this map we are applying the fertilizer here let's see this example red line let's see this red areas red areas has the less amount of potassium fertilizer about 8.5 to 12.5 gram per kg soil potassium so this area needs more fertilizer and are we doing that or not let's see here let's go to the red area how much we are using we are using 120 kg kcl per hectare soil per hectare land well let's see the green area green area has more potassium 14 to 20 gram per kg soil and in this green area in this green area we are using less amount of fertilizer we use 120 kilogram per hectare for the red one we use only 40 kilogram per hectare for the green one because green one has the more fertilizer already in the soil profile so based on this information we are using the different rate of fertilizers and they, that makes our farming system more profitable because we are applying the fertilizer where it is needed this is a pest management you can see based on the color we can make a decision for example areas to be spread the red areas especially there is a severe problem of disease any disease but in the green areas probably we don't need to spray here so it is not only for the irrigation management but it, it also helps in disease and pest management there are different sensors we use in remote sensing airborne and ground based sensors some are the airborne sensors and some are the ground based sensors here you can, these, are, these are the airborne especially drones uh, uavs unmanned aerial vehicles and here is the small sensor this is the ground based sensor let's talk about some ground based sensors there are four important sensors available in the market these four sensors optrex the first one then the green seeker second one this is the top one crop sensor and the last one is the crop circle and these all sensors are used to collect data from the field and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the green seeker today and green seeker is a 
Trimble means Trimble is the company that produced the green seekers, specific green seekers. Last year, we had published one paper using these green seekers, use of NTBI for characterizing winter wheat response to water stress in a semi-arid environment. You all know that I used to work in Texas before. Texas environment is very dry and it is semi-arid environment. Then we use these sensors and we use special indices that is called NTVI. What is it? I'll tell you. Using the NTVI, we try to characterize the winter wheat response to water stress. Normalized difference vegetation index NDVI. NDVI is one of the most widely used non-destructive tool. Non-destructive means we can get the information without damaging the plants, without cutting the plants. That helps to estimate plant health and plant biomass. Plant health, especially how green the plants are, we can use this machine to know about it. And we can, based on this information, we can estimate the plant biomass or yield. We can estimate about that. And this index, I mean the NDVI, could be anywhere between negative one to positive one. As it is goes to goes to negative one, it is not the plant. It could be something like ice or water or rocks or soil. But it as it goes close to one, it is really the plant surface. So plant will have close to one and non plant surface i mean water rocks soil ice will have close to negative one value photosynthesis green plants can do photosynthesis in the presence of sunlight carbon dioxide and water and the byproduct is oxygen and sugar the light spectrum before we understand ndvi we have to understand how the light spectrum works and how the chlorophyll absorbs light at different wavelength and let's let's see here chlorophyll strongly absorbs light at wavelengths around 450 to 670 this area chlorophyll absorbs the light in this area only this area this light is invisible but be using our sensors using our equipments we are able to detect this light but this light is invisible light and in the light spectrum healthy plants have a high reflectance in the near infrared between 700 and 1300 so this region is the reflectance region high reflectance you can see the reflectance is high reflectance percent it is very high after about 700 it is very high let's see this area this is the visible light area and in this visible light area where is the highest percentage of reflectance this is the reflectant percent you can see the highest percent of reflectance is here in the green portion that means chlorophyll is reflecting green spectrum while it is absorbing red spectrum reflectance is low here high here this is absorption this is reflection again chlorophyll is strongly reflecting green light while it is reflecting less red light that means red light is absorbed green light is reflected because chlorophyll reflect this green light we see all the plants green and let's go back this one light spectrum is again coming red portion blue portion they are absorbed and the green portion is reflected and this reflected light once strike once hit our eyes we see the plant green and if the plant is dead what happens if the plant is dead it cannot reflect the green light like this probably it will reflect green light it will, it will reflect all kinds of light at the same time so it won't look green like this again here dead leaf it is reflecting all kinds of light same amount so the color is different here the green portion is increasing that's why it is looking better better in the sense looking a little bit green and in the last one 
the green portion is really higher than blue and red portion that's why this leaf is green though the reflection is high here near infrared we cannot see that this is the invisible light let's see this figure near infrared this plant is healthy plant it is reflecting about 50 percent of the near infrared and again we cannot see this light this plant is not very healthy and this is reflecting about 40 percent of the near infrared but the most important thing is the red light see there is red light this healthy plant is reflecting only 8 percent red light because healthy plants absorb red light and reflect green light but here this plant is not healthy so the absorption of red light is less that means it is reflecting 30 percent red light here this plant is reflecting 8 percent red light because red light is used here this plant is reflecting 30 percent red light because less red light is used here for example here 92 percent red light is used only 8 percent reflected here only 70 percent use 30 percent reflected and based on this information we can calculate the ndvi value ndvi is nir this is nir nir minus red minus red percent divided by nir plus red so can you calculate the ndvi for this healthy plant and can you calculate the ndvi for this non healthy plant Okay, information is here. NIR for this one use NIR 50 minus 8. 50 minus 8 divided by 50 plus 8. That would be the NDVI for this green plant. And for this unhealthy plant, the NDVI would be 40 minus 30 divided by 40 plus 30. And your work is calculate the NDVI. And based on the NDVI, we will know the health condition of our vegetation. Now we know here because we have a picture. But if we are taking the dis picture from the distance, from thousands of miles, then we don't know which part of the field is green, which part of the field is not. Or, or which part of the field is healthy, which part of the field is not healthy. We don't know from the distance. And once we get the NDVI data, we will know where the plants are healthy, where the plants are not healthy within the same field. My negative 1 to 0 dead plants or some other objects, about 0.3 unhealthy plants, about 0.3 to 0.6 moderately healthy plants and if the plants are very healthy, the NDVI value will come 0.6 to 1. So green, less green means low NDVI or low NDVI means less green either way. Whereas high NDVI value indicates high chlorophyll content and healthy plants. High chlorophyll content and healthy plants will have the high NDVI value. This is the another map, NDVI data. And it shows the different health condition of the plants. And based on these NDVI values, we can plan for the future. It could be disease management, it could be fertilizer management, or it could be water management and do not rely totally on ndvi values because once the plant are very green the ndvi values will be saturated they cannot go more than one so healthy plants will show ndvi value of one or close to one all healthy plants that's why many people think that we should not rely only the only on the ndvi values there are other indices other methods to monitor the field and we have to use different indices at the same time to monitor the field and make the decision. NDVI is the one of the decisions making tool out of many.